This is The Real Hustle. New recruits. The Hustlers are back, and this time they've brought in two new faces to help them with their scams. New recruits Polly and Jazz. They'll join original Hustlers, Paul, Jess and Alex. Working together as a team, they'll carry out scams that are more cunning and devious than ever before. On tonight's show, ex-copper Rav Wilding gets a taste of the criminal life. I know you want to count it, Rob, but if it's all there, mate. Jess finally snaps. Snap it in the middle, but don't actually break it. No, hang on a minute. And these guys will never use free Wi-Fi again. I do feel violated almost. The marks in this show have no idea they're being hustled. They agreed the footage could be shown so that you can avoid falling for the same scams. The hustlers have invited celebrity friends to help them with their scams. They'll be thrown in at the deep end, no training and no practice, just straight in. Today's celebrity guest hustler is former police detective and presenter of Crime Watch, Rav Wilding. I don't know if I'd make a good hustler. I'd like to think I would, because my time in the police, obviously I've seen a lot of people get um, hustled themselves for real. So I think I'd probably be able to do it, but until we put it to the test, I just don't know. I definitely think if I do hustle someone, I will feel guilty that I've done that to someone, and that's what I'm, I'm actually dreading that. Rav has been told to go to a central London landmark and wait for instructions. Lucky for him, he brought an umbrella. Here comes Alex to fill him in. Come with me. How are you? Yeah, good. So, you've been a policeman, you present Crime Watch. What I'm going to do today is put you on the other side of the lawn. Okay. All right. So, we're going to do a scam that was done in New Jersey a couple of years ago. It had the police fooled but it also had some of the criminal underworld fooled as to how it was done. I'm intrigued. You're intrigued? Yeah, bring it on. Let's go. <laughs> the good cop will have to turn bad cop in all that glitters. This is the Mark. He's on his way to a corporate office complex for a meeting. He's expecting to meet a PR manager who's selling off props from a major film shoot. And he's in no doubt that he's come to the right place because he walks straight into a press scrum. Susie, can you give us one look, please? It looks like some celebrity starlet is trying to avoid a prying photographer. Susie, this way. Thank you. Actually, nothing is quite what it seems. The starlet is Jess, the paparazzo is Jazz, and that chauffeur is Alex. The little scene has been staged purely for the Mark's benefit, who now thinks PR man Paul must be the real deal. I'm Rob, nice to meet you. Come on upstairs. Paul takes the Mark into the office building. They head upstairs to sort out the purchase he's here for. Going through. Don't let it fool you, we don't have phones at work yet, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's all good. It's a new place, it's nice. As they settle in, Paul has some bad news. So, I'm right in saying you hear about the netbooks yeah. from the Indian production, probably. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have to tell you, I'm afraid they haven't arrived yet. So the Mark is here to buy a laptop that's being sold off, along with other props from a film shoot. The only problem is the laptop hasn't turned up yet. Well, I mean, I'd love to do something for you guys. I've got somebody coming in, but let's see. Maybe Paul can offer him another computer instead. There's a BBC production that's using Apple's computers, I mean, like that type of thing. Uh, won't be released for about a month or so. Before they can discuss alternate arrangements, another customer turns up. It's Rav, who's also here to buy something. Have you got a minute, Jack, or do I need yeah, to yeah. see you right now? Uh, I'm a bit early. Um, hang on. 
do you want to? Do you mind waiting for five minutes? Let me take no. care of this, and then we'll see what we can do for yeah, you. I don't really. I feel bad that you've come all this way. Um, just give me a couple of minutes. Sorry, guys. Paul asks the mark to wait outside while he deals with Rav. Rav is here to buy some jewellery, also left over from the film. Good news. Yep. They've sent double. It's 18 to 22 carat. I will need three for it. Not Rav and Paul talk loud enough for the mark to overhear. I've got 15, Rob, you know that. And I'm going away in the morning. I mean, can you get another 50 now? I mean... Not cash, I can't. Can you split it? But Paul has got more goods than Rav can afford to buy. If only there was someone else nearby with money in his pocket. Oh, I'll make some, who, yeah. who are these cages? Are they yours, are they? Uh, no, they've come to buy a couple of notebooks. Uh... What do you mean? I didn't well, let me ask him. I mean, I don't, ask it's him, not, yeah. you know, ask I'm him. not usually in the habit of asking guys to buy that right away. Um, you guys brought money for the netbooks. Yeah. Um, would you be interested in making a little money today? Well, probably double your cash, actually, if, you, if you're interested. It's probably nothing you want to keep, but you could sell it on by the end of the day. What do you think? Yeah, come on in, I'll tell you. Um, Jack, grab that chair over there for me, will you? Pull it over. Paul has a little business proposition for the mark. Even without that cheap laptop, he might be able to make this meeting worth his while. What we do at this company is we represent a lot of artists for press reasons, but what we also do is we represent productions. And Jack here is here to pick up something because it's a company that just made an Indian movie on the South Bank. They had a massive amount of gold, and so the excess is here. I've got double what I was expecting. What the prop manager has told me is it's 18 carat or better, which means it's very good gold. You can melt it, you'll make about four grand, but if you sell it wholesale, you could get about five for it. So if you've got 1,500, you're gonna make about a grand at least with it. If you're interested, if not, then I'm sorry, there's nothing I can I can't split it up, you see. I've got to sell it all in one package and then give them the money. So Paul is offering some cut price gold left over from a film shoot, which could be a nice little earner for the mark. Have you got it? Do we have a look at it? Yeah, yeah let me go okay. get it and have a look at it. He goes off to get the jewellery, leaving Rav to persuade the mark that he can trust PR man Paul. I've worked with him loads, he's alright. He's alright. quite a bit. Yeah, loads. The cars especially. Really? Yeah, no, he's all right. He's, he's all legit. But like I said, he can't, he can't take it to the jewellers because he's got to register himself and stuff, which he don't do. But um, let's have a look at it first. But obviously, if you want to get it tested, he's fine. We'll just get someone in here. Get someone in here and test it. Yeah. Because then that way, I mean, it's my money as much as, as yours. So obviously, I'm not going to put my money into it unless I know it's... You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, that way, if it's genuine. And if they say what it's worth, if they say it's worth £5, pounds, yeah. 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 Mm. Paul's back with the goods. It certainly looks like authentic gold. I can weigh it, but I would, I would highly recommend you test it. I think yeah, I mean, I'd, yeah, it you could sense. weigh it, wouldn't mean anything to me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. As nobody here is an expert in gold, maybe they should arrange for a professional to examine it. Paul helpfully supplies a local business directory. You guys want to bring somebody in? Yeah. Doesn't matter to me. What to do is have them invoice me. I'll take it out of my commission. Just yeah, take That's your pay. Why don't right. you choose who it is? So. You'll pay for them to come here and, and value that. Yeah, no problem. But we choose who it is. It's down to the mark and his friends to arrange the test. That way, it's all above board. But will he really make that call? Just any goldsmith at all. A goldsmith so. would do it, yeah. wouldn't yeah. um, He's picked up the phone book. Yeah, yeah. Tell you if you call he's got to be today, mate. If we get him over here this afternoon, I know I'm not doing anything after five. And he puts in a call to a jewellery company. Uh, yeah, I'm looking if, um, if you've got... Six o'clock? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, six is fine, yeah. He arranges for a call-out appointment to test the quality of the gold later that afternoon. So, what's the name of the, the company? Uh, it's it's all right, I won't ask you to leave any cash just now. I'll just nah, trust you yeah. for it. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, but these stay with me. All right, guys, listen, I don't want to chase you, but I need to get some lunch before the yeah, rest yeah. of it kicks off this afternoon. So, how will the hustlers separate this man from his money? They might be able to fool a layman, but they'll never fool a professional gold test. Or will they? When hustlers go out, they don't bring money, they bring prop bets. Challenges designed to win or lose a drink. But a proposition bet only has one rule, and that's that the hustler always wins.
Jess is out on the town and has made some new acquaintances. Someone is going to have to get the next round in, and Jess is going to make sure it's not her. I've got a challenge for you, okay. but I, I need you to help me set it up first, so you're going to help me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I? yeah. OK, so I've got some cocktail sticks here. Yeah. Uh, now, there's four of us. I need five, so I'll do two, and you can all do one each, if you don't mind. Three. There you go, there's one, two, three, four. And I've got five. Snap it in the middle, but don't actually break it, just like that. I want it to be as close to the middle as possible. So if you can all do that with your cocktail sticks, don't snap it completely in half. So if you just give me your cocktail sticks. OK, so I've got five here. I'm going to put them all together to make like a ten-point star, like that. Now, I'm going to pick one of you to do this, so I'm going to pick you. Really? So the challenge is, I've got a ten-point star there. Without touching the cocktail sticks, I want you to turn that ten-point star into a five-point star. Now, if you can do that, I will buy you a drink. If you can't do it, then you have to get around him for everyone. Great. Deal? Yeah, deal. <laughs> Excellent. So, to win a drink, Jess's new friends need to turn this ten-pointed star into a five-pointed star. The only thing is, they can't actually touch the toothpicks. Go for it. Without touching them? Yeah. Can I blow them? Um, if, if, if that's what you want to do, you can try it. Have a go. Have a go. It's, this is your challenge. You can do what you want without touching the cocktail sticks. OK. Go. I can't think of anything else to try, okay. so... OK, that's not a... Um, that, that's not a, a five-point star. No. I've only actually got three cocktail sticks left. You just blew them off the table. I didn't that, have any that's idea. fine. So I'm going to set these up. That's roughly how they were before, weren't they? Yeah, I? yeah. OK. Now, obviously, I said you couldn't touch them. I didn't say you couldn't use anything. Now, I'm not going to touch them, but I'm going to use a little bit of water. Oh, 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 oh I do love this bit when no he's way. doing it. <laughs> oh, I love this bit. <laughs> Come on. That's how she is. It seems impossible, unless you know how. A couple of drops of water make the wood in the toothpaste swell up straightening them out to form a five-pointed star. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I'll have a Chardonnay. You OK? Yeah, you oh, thanks. And then soon you go. Hey. A bar in a trendy suburb of London. People are going about their business, enjoying drinks, relaxing, and using the free Wi-Fi network. But this customer is not off duty. It's new recruit Polly, and it looks like she's here on business. In Taking the Biscuit. This lady has just become her first mark. Hi there. Um, I wonder whether you could help me and do a bit of um, market research and do an online survey for me. It's just about like what you want to shop, you know, like what you buy and yeah. stuff. And basically, just you can put anything in your basket. You don't have to buy anything. Don't yeah. buy anything. But just, you know, have fun. And it's basically to see what people buy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's all like yeah. that, really. Yeah. Yeah, Is that cool? Right. Yeah. Just gonna get this oh, fantastic. Okay. What's your email? Um, so Polly is carrying out some market research. She sends the mark an email with details of an internet survey. All the lady has to do is log in to a few online shopping and social networking sites, then fill out the survey, rating how user friendly they are. Thanks, Lynn. lovely. Okay. See you in a bit. Other people with laptops are also asked to take part. Twitter and just tweet that your heels are... Just reply to yeah. email yeah. and just yeah. say how easy it is. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. Okay. All right. So, spend a few minutes browsing the internet, then fill in a few questions. What could possibly go wrong? After leaving the bar, the marks were shown some computer printouts. This is my uh, Hotmail account, which has all my, obviously, private emails in there. No, hang on a minute. That was on your Twitter, wasn't it? That was on my Twitter. Those printouts should look familiar, because they're of the web pages the marks had just logged into, using their confidential logins and passwords. But I'd be interested to know how you did that, because that is quite scary. So, what really just happened? No. Just reply to yeah. the email yeah. and just yeah. say how easy it is. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Oh. Polly wasn't interested in market surveys. 
The hustlers were just trying to get the marks to visit sites that required them to log into private accounts. But even without the bogus survey, this scam can happen to anyone using open Wi-Fi anywhere. What the marks didn't notice was another computer user on the other side of the room. It was Jazz. And he was interested in just one thing. Cookies. A cookie is a computer file that's like a key for websites. When a user logs into an account, they provide their username and password. These details are often encrypted, so they're very hard for criminals to intercept. This is sent from their laptop to the Wi-Fi connection and then onto the website. But then, the website sends back a cookie that's saved onto the user's laptop. The cookie basically means the laptop has already logged in with the correct password and it doesn't need to log in again. But the cookie is normally unencrypted. Jazz was running a freely available piece of software that allowed him to make a copy of the cookie as it was being sent to the Mark's laptop. And once it was saved onto his computer, he could just visit the same site as the Mark and was allowed straight into their account. No login and no password required. I feel quite, what's the right word for it? I can't even think the right word, what's the right word? Violated almost, yeah. you know? So it's not brilliant. <laughs> The hustlers just added items to the Mark's Amazon checkout baskets and used their Twitter accounts to post bogus tweets. I've just been scanned by the real hustle. <laughs> but if this had been a genuine criminal attack, the results could have been devastating. Criminals with access to your logged in accounts could potentially um, hijack your shopping session, add stuff to your shopping cart. Worst case scenario, if a criminal gets hold of your email account, for example, I mean, they could send any email in your name, they could instruct people to change your delivery addresses, set up bank accounts in your name. You think of your worst nightmare, they could at least get the ball rolling on that with your email. If you own a Wi-Fi device, you're probably always looking for a free hotspot. But remember, you could be sharing that hotspot with anyone. In this case, we've accessed a couple of low-risk websites, but real criminals could be eavesdropping on your most private conversations. Oh, no. Susie, can you give us one look, please? Earlier in the day, a Mark arrived at a PR company to buy a second-hand laptop. But his look was out. Sorry, I'm afraid they haven't arrived yet. No way. Oh, Instead, Guest hustler Rav offered the Mark the chance to join him in buying some gold at a rock bottom price. You can melt it, you'll make about four grand. But if you sell it wholesale, you could get about five for it. The Mark agreed to get the gold tested by a genuine jeweler. If it turns out to be high quality, he stands to make a nice little profit. But these stay with me. In All That Glitters, part two. It's early evening by the time the Mark and his mate return to the PR company offices. Paul brings them back upstairs and gets out the gold chains, ready for inspection. So you come from far? And right on time, here comes Rav, along with the jeweller. Um, I knew I was going to have a look at the stuff, what all right, so this is what we've got. These are chains that... She's brought along a professional gold testing kit. It contains bottles of acid that are used to determine how many carrots or how pure the gold really is. Are you able to actually tell us whether it's 18 yeah, or 22? I can tell it's 9, 18, 23, 24. Well, fake would be bad. Fake oh, <laughs> bad, yeah. Okay. Um, rather than check them all, which you're welcome to do, um, I would just pick whichever ones you want to test. If these chains are really 22 karat gold, as Paul has promised, they'll be worth thousands of pounds. Les, if you just want to pick a couple at, at random, just to check out. I'll bring in this one. That it's one? Quite thick and... Yeah, it's pretty thick and chunky, isn't it? Yeah. Start with that one. Right, guys, I'm going to start with the nine carat. Okay, so we've got a little acid solution here. Little tiny drops, all you need. First of all, if it goes green, turquoise, blue, it's fake. Right. If it doesn't show a colour, which this hasn't at all, then it means it's higher than nine carat. Mm -hmm. If this is cheap gold, the acid should make it change colour, but it stays the same. That means it's higher than 9 carat, but that's still a long way from the 22 carats Paul has promised. Next solution test between 
16 at 14 to 24 carats. Again, what you need to do. Okay. <laughs> and as you can see, there's no colour change on that at all. Yeah. What's well, so that one is? That indicates that it's 20. 24 carats. So that's even better. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So what's the value of that? The gold is worth even more than expected. No colour change means this isn't 22, but 24 carats. That's 99.9% .9 pure gold. Rav wants to test another chain, just to be sure. Do you have anything to compare the test with, by the way? The mark's still being cautious. Yeah, like a, a nine carat. Gold. Well, actually, we're not going to see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I want to see one. I'm happy with those 24. Do you guys have a gold chain or anything? Nah, I don't wear jewellery. They'll have to rely on the jeweller's word. If there's no colour change again, this whole batch must be 24 karat gold. So again, that's the same grade of gold. Yeah, that would be 24's as high as it goes, right? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. That's as high as we can test. He takes a closer look to reassure himself. Oh, careful. careful. Yeah. <laughs> Job done. Hey, Sorry, 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 Sorry. The jeweller packs away the kit and says her goodbyes. Thanks again. Nice bye bye. Thanks very much. Thanks for coming over. So what's really going on? Are the hustlers going to sell the mark pure gold at a fraction of the market price? That's yours. That's yours. Not a chance. Because those chains are anything but 24 karat gold. So how did they fool not just the mark, but also the gold tester? Well, that's where the other hustlers came in. Their roles didn't end with the paparazzi scramble earlier on. As the mark was getting the hard sell from Paul... 18 carat or better, which means it's very good gold. Jess and Jazz were waiting for their cue in a nearby hotel room. Listen, I'm absolutely fine. You guys want to bring somebody in? Yeah. It doesn't matter. The mark really did choose a genuine jeweller from the phone book. But the hustlers made a second appointment with the same company for mid-afternoon. Oh, hi. Nice to meet you. I'm Susie. Hi, hi. Come in. Thanks for coming. Jess and Jazz also had some gold they wanted testing in their hotel room. Do you think it's changed colour? Yeah. But the hustlers weren't interested in getting a proper valuation. It was all an excuse for Jazz to get close enough to film the exact make and model of testing kit with a concealed camera. All right, I've got it, Polly. Right, this is the uh, gold kit she's using. Armed with this footage, the hustlers were able to pick out an identical test kit with exactly the same plastic bottles. Press this one, and empty this acid. They emptied out the acid and replaced it with water and a touch of food colouring to make it match. Even the cheapest gold won't change colour if you test it with water instead of acid. But how did those bottles get into the jeweller's hands? When she arrived at the office building that evening, she had to go through security. And the security guard just happened to be another hustler. I'm going to have to take you some security and have a quick look in your bags. Sorry. It gave Alex an excuse to go through her bags. All he needed then was a little distraction. So what, what is this? It's a gold testing kit. That's where Rav came in. Oh, hi, you here to test the gold? Yeah. Brilliant. Hi, I'm Jack. How you doing? Yeah, I'm Annabelle. Whilst he distracted the jeweller, Alex replaced the acid bottles with ones containing water. Well, I'm one of the ones that's, uh, that's called you to stay, so you're actually okay. going to do us a big favour just to make sure everything's OK. Yeah, no. Upstairs, is that all right? Yeah, Brilliant. So that all seems to be in order. I've put that back in. Oh, so. There you go. Brilliant, thanks a lot. Thank you. Rav took her upstairs. Despite all the trickery, the hustlers still weren't sure they'd be able to fool the jeweller. So Paul asked her to test the chains in private before the mark arrived. We were told it was 18 and above. It hasn't changed colour at all, which means that it's 24 colour. Right. Once he was sure he would get the result he needed, he asked her to wait until his potential customer returned, 
and then repeat the test for his benefit. So now, it's down to business. Paul weighs out the chains to work out how much gold they're dealing with. What do we have there? We have 167. He checks the current market rate on the internet. That works out as 4,043.45. The chains are worth more than four grand at the scrap metal rate, but they'll be able to sell them for much more than that. If you guys want to go ahead, what I'll do is I'll split that into two halves. You guys get first choice. So if the mark buys half of the gold for 1,500 quid, he's guaranteed to make a very nice profit when he sells it on. Rav leads the way by getting his money out. Well, I'll let you go. All right. I know you want to count it, but if it's still there, mate, if it's off, you know you want the back. But will the mark also buy the jewellery from someone he's only just met? Yep. The hustlers have a sale. Perfect. The mark leaves, thinking he's made an excellent investment. In fact, those chains are worth tens, not thousands of pounds. He's about to find out that all that glitters is not 24 karat gold. Seeing the test, like all of a sudden it just, you know, I just thought, oh, well, there we go. It never clicked to think that, oh, it could just be water. Yeah. I don't know really now. Well, after witnessing both sides, I think I'll stick exactly where I was, on the right side of the law, and that is where I intend to stay. When I actually saw them handing over their own cash, it was awful, and it weren't 20 quid, we're talking a lot of money. I felt awful. When this scam first happened in America, it totally baffled the authorities. The only possible explanation was that the jeweler was in on it, but that wasn't the case. And this is what makes this scam work so well. The mark themselves can pick a jeweler that they trust and know to be genuine, and they will still lose their money. Just as in our case, the jeweler was real, the test was real, but the gold certainly wasn't. People should say to themselves, when I got up this morning, did I really mean to go out and buy gold chains or jewelry from a complete stranger? This was a really professional con, but underlying it was a deal that looked too good to be true, and it wasn't true. The hustlers have invited celebrity friends to help them with their scams. They'll be thrown in at the deep end. No training and no practice, just straight in. Today's celebrity guest hustler is an actress best known for her starring role in Hollyoaks, Jennifer Metcalf. I'm a little bit nervous because I don't know if I'm capable of getting money or anything off someone. Um, I hope I don't burst out laughing halfway through. I haven't got a clue what I'm doing, so I'm just going to go with the flow and just try and put my butter won't melt eyes on. Jennifer hasn't been told any details of today's scam. She's just been sent to a restaurant where a table has been booked in her name. Hi, uh, I have a reservation. It's not long before she's joined by a hustler. Hi, Gaff. Hello. I'm Paul. Paul, I'm Jen. <laughs> nice to meet you. Okay, you too. How are you feeling? I'm good, good. Nervous? A little tired. Yeah, yeah. You feel lucky? Not really, no. Okay, it's funny because <laughs> it uh, has been the luckiest day of your life. Okay. You've won a massive amount of money. Okay. Unfortunately, you need someone to help you collect it. Okay. This is a version of one of the oldest scams in the book. Mm -hmm. It's usually played today with emails, maybe with a scam mail that comes through the door. But we're going to do old school style, person to person. What do you think? I'm up for it. All right, we're going to find out. Jennifer will need all that enthusiasm and more as she goes undercover in The Syndicate. A smart city hotel is the scene of crime today. These young ladies enter the foyer, minding their own business. One of them has just become the mark. There's a business conference happening in the hotel, and here come a couple of delegates. It's Jess and Jennifer, moving in for the hit. The first stage of the scam is going to draw a bit of attention. 
because these smartly dressed business ladies are about to have a right old Barney. You've cost us, not hundreds, but thousands. You know that, don't you? I thought we'd do the right thing, not It sounds like Jennifer has done something very stupid, which has cost Jess a lot of money. Do you know what really, really f them? Is that the people in there, they're not even giving you a hard time about it because they know that you're going to start crying. I don't care simple. if you cry or not, though, because you need to be told what you've done is wrong. Well, they understand it's a simple mistake. It's not a simple mistake. Stop crying. The mark hasn't recognised Jennifer. So far, so good. But she certainly noticed the noisy squabbling. It wasn't actually your ticket, so why would you even put your name Because in? they give it to me and I saw they said, write your name on it, so I just wrote it. The scene is also drawing attention from the hotel staff. Hi there, ladies. Just in okay? Yeah, yeah, we're fine. In fact, it's new hustler, Polly. Hi there, are you okay? She's here to strike up a conversation with the mark. I'm the customer relations manager here. Um, so if you've got any problems or you want any help with anything, don't hesitate to um, call me. I'll get, sorry, what was your name? Gemma. Gemma? Kramer. Kramer. I'll just get my card for you, OK? Yeah. The fake customer service manager heads off, with the argument still raging behind her. Seriously, it's like, but I wouldn't out with you all the time. I'm the only one who actually knows what you like. I said, why have you even given it to her to look after in the first place? Time for Alex to join the girls. He's also playing a convention goer. Do you know what? Don't even come and speak to me for the rest of the day, actually. Hey, hey, hey. I can't believe she's been like that about I'm so sorry. Listen, she'll be fine. She needs to calm down. She's just all a bit excited, isn't it? Everyone's been so understanding, but you, could, you don't get it. I didn't write it intentionally. I know. It's making me feel proper anxious of me, and she's embarrassed me in front of everyone. It's just, just being stupid, because that you were trying to help. As Alex tries to console Jennifer, Polly returns. So you can't, yeah. Hey there, is everything OK here? Yes, thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. Miss Kramer, here's your card. Do so you want anything? And I'll sort it out for you, OK? Ladies, Enjoy your day. That lady's name Enjoy is... your day. Great, thank you. That lady's name is Kramer. S excuse me, sorry, did I hear you right? Is your name Kramer? Yeah. What's your first name? Alex has overheard the Mark's name and suddenly has a light bulb moment. Look, if her name is Kramer, you're Gabby Kramer. So, so if, you're, if you've got somebody with the same initial and somebody with the same name... That'd be amazing. Sorry, excuse me. I know this sounds a bit outlandish. Well, we need somebody who's got the same name and initial as her, with G Kramer. Do you spell your name that way as well? Yeah? yeah. I was just wanted to ask you. They, basically, what's happened is they, they do a, they do. A, we all work in the restaurant trade, but their restaurant have got a little lottery syndicate all together, and um, they buy a ticket every week. You know, she, she looks after it, and she wrote her name on it because I, I think the lottery say that you, you should write your name on the back of it because if it's winning, then nobody else can take it off you. They were going to go and cash it, but then they re realised that Gabby was out of the country when the ticket was bought. So she's not allowed to cash it. I didn't know that, I just found out. So here's the story. They're in a work lottery syndicate and have won a lot of money. But Gabby Kramer here has only gone and written her name on the back of the ticket. But she was abroad at the time and you have to be in the country when the purchase takes place. So now she can't claim the winnings. Well, the tickets won, just won quite a lot of money. That's why the girl was giving her because basically they found out that the other five people, they found out that they've won tens of thousands and they can't cash it. By a miraculous coincidence, the mark has exactly the same family name and initial. Of course, this is no coincidence at all. Hi there, you OK? Yes. Customer service manager Polly only introduced herself to the mark in order to find out her name. Sorry, what was your name? Gemma. Gemma? Kramer. Kramer, oh, lovely to meet you. Behind the scenes, she then printed out a badge with the same name and initial. When she returned to the foyer, she slipped the badge to Jennifer. Is everything OK here? Yes, thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. Whilst Polly handed over her business card, the badge came out, turning Jennifer into Gabby Kramer. Alex wants to persuade the mark to collect the winnings using her name, G Kramer. What I was going to ask you is, Apparently, all you need to do is go to the um, to a news agents. You give the ticket, and they give you a certificate that you've won, and then they send you the check. If you could basically get the ticket, 
to go to the news agent and get the certificate. That's all we need. I'm sure they'll, you'll give, I mean, thousands of pounds. Her boss, he owns a restaurant in Mayfair and he's part of the syndicate. I'm sure he will take care of you. I mean, like, if they pay you 500 quid or something. See, without someone like you, they'd get nothing. Would you be able to do that? I'd be so, so happy. 500 quid for doing almost nothing. Who could resist? I'll tell you what, I'll give you... Have you got a pen? Have you got a paper? I'll give you this address and come to the restaurant. The Mark agrees to meet Alex and the rest of the syndicate at their restaurant later this afternoon. We'll be there, so we'll see you later. So, OK, I'll give you a call if anything changes. But she's going to find out that Lady Luck isn't on her side today. It's not that I don't trust you, I just don't know you. I'm sorry, I, I, I really am. When hustlers go out, they don't bring money. They bring prop bets. The proposition bet only has one rule, and that's that the hustler always wins. New recruit Polly is out on the town with some friends. But Polly knows hustlers never buy the drinks. Right, Ben, I've got to ask you a question. Do you think in my glass I've got more drink than you've got in yours? Yes. Yeah, OK. I've got a little challenge for you. Yeah. OK. Right, this is the bet, OK? I bet that I could drink all of this yeah. before you could finish yours, OK? If I do finish mine before yours, you have to buy me a drink. If you drink yours before I finish mine, then I'll buy you a drink. What's, what's the glass? Right, yeah, this is the condition, OK? Right. The condition is... You have to drink both of these drinks at the same time using both straws, and you have okay. to keep sucking the straws until all the liquid is gone. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you up for this challenge? Okay. Give yeah. Me a little shake. Yeah. Okay. So to win the prop bet, this guy needs to finish his drink before Polly does, and he has an edge. Not only does he have less liquid to start with, he has two glasses and two straws to drink from at the same time, for double the suction. One of you say one, two, three, go. Right, okay. And on the go, start sucking, yeah? Okay. okay, ready? One, two, three, go. <laughs> oh, you don't want to finish. I won! Holly finished first. And that's because her friend's glasses had an uneven amount of liquid in them. Go. Once he'd emptied one glass, he was just sucking up air through that straw, meaning he had no suction on the liquid left in the other glass. So he'd never be able to complete the challenge. What a sucker. <laughs> I won! <laughs> Told you. Oh my... <laughs> 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 Don't forget a day with Polly, will you? <laughs> Jess, Alex and Paul are taking a trip in the hustle van. And judging by the temporary branding on the sides, they're out on business in The Upgrade. The hustlers are doing some cold calling in a residential neighbourhood. And they're specifically targeting people with a visible satellite dish. Hello. My name's Susie, I work for TRH Installations. We're doing a scheme on your street today with my colleague just next door. Jess points to Paul a couple of doors down. I'm just over there. Two people in matching jerseys on the same street, they must be legit. Do you have a satellite? Can I ask you? 
today we're doing a, a scheme. What we're going to do is we're going to offer for a whole year access to every single channel. All the sports, um, all the films, also, you know, all the box office channels that you usually have to pay for. Doing all of those as well, so you'll have access to every film. What we do is we swap your card over, mm -hmm. give you a new card, activate it in 90 minutes. It's £50 for the entire year. Um, all we want to do is, at the very end, is if you fill out a quick survey telling us how you found it. So Jess and Paul work for a local satellite company and are signing people up for an Access All Areas promotional deal. For a one-off top-up fee, existing satellite subscribers will get all premium channels for a year, and it only costs £50. That's £50. Pounds. For the entire year? As long as you do the survey. Then... As long as you do the survey, yeah. It takes about two seconds. Does something you'll be interested in? Like I said, for £50 pounds for the entire year, yeah. It's a great scheme. Shall I go and get one of the technicians for you? Right. You can come. He's already done a few houses right now. I'll go get them for you. Thank okay, you. no worries. All right, so we are done. Have you got the cards um, Give me the card you've got and I'll go and get you a new one. Looks like the hustlers have a customer. Right, do you want to replace that? Aye. Right, it'll be £50 Aye. Um, if you want the card just now. Aye. Great, okay, I'll do that for you. I'll be right back. In order to upgrade their package, Paul needs to swap the viewing card for a new one. Alex must have a stash of new viewing cards in the van. Because after some paperwork, Paul returns bearing a welcome package, complete with a VIP viewing card. Paul puts it in the receiver. Right, and you've still got everything here, which is good. It must really be a legitimate viewing card, otherwise it simply wouldn't work in the receiver. That'll be £50. There's just a small matter Thank you very much. of the one-off fee. I'll be right back with your receipt. Okay, no worries. Actually, no one will be getting a receipt because as soon as they've got the cash, the hustlers jump in the van and are gone. So what's really going on? Okay, I'll do that for you. I'll be right back. The secret's in that brand new viewing card the hustlers are getting from Alex. Here's what the marks didn't see. Alex took their existing viewing card, gave it a bit of a clean, added a sticker to make it look new, and handed it back to Paul attached to a bogus welcome letter. Right. All the marks' old channels reappeared. Perfect. Of course they did. It was their own viewing card after all. Right. That'll be 50 pounds. They all paid £50 for a little green sticker and an official-looking letter. That's your media. Made easy. Unfortunately, those premium channels will never appear, no matter how long they wait. 50 quid for all the channels, that was that. Um, the guy who was pretty convincing seemed to know what he was talking about. People look genuine enough to me. The guy came in, the card related to the headline on the paper. Yeah. His van was all logoed up, so I would seen all that. She told me she was going to come back with a seat, but she hasn't came back yet. Unlimited satellite for £50 seems too good to be true, but it's the small details that make this scam convincing. Companies do occasionally run trial schemes for new services, and with the badges, uniforms and official-looking van, this offer seems completely legit. You should never part with cash to somebody who cold calls you on the doorstep under any circumstances, no matter how good the deal looks. Always ask for their ID, phone the company and check it out. Earlier today, Jennifer Metcalf helped the hustlers rope in this mark in an upmarket hotel foyer. She thinks they're part of a work syndicate who've won a lot of money on the lottery. But silly Jennifer has written her name on the back of the ticket when she was ineligible to claim the winnings. You've cost us, not hundreds, but thousands. You know that, don't you? The Mark thinks that Jennifer shares the same surname and initial as her. You give the ticket and they give you a certificate that you've won. She's agreed to claim the money for the syndicate for a handsome fee of £500 and their eternal gratitude in... The Syndicate Part 2. The Mark and her friend are on their way to the restaurant where Alex, Jennifer and the rest of the Syndicate work. They go inside to find some familiar faces. 
and a new one. It belongs to Paul, the restaurant owner and final member of the lottery syndicate. So Ian has told me a little bit about this. He met you guys yesterday or? Earlier on this morning. This no, actually, morning? It was actually this afternoon, wasn't it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So he just met you guys. Thank you. And uh, your name is? Uh, it's amazing. Did, did he explain to you what's happened? There you go, Joe. Kind of, yeah. Right. I was just, thank you. I, just, I, I would like to know a little bit more. Yeah, I'm, I need to know a little bit more as well, to be honest. But it's, um... Paul seems more cautious than the rest of the syndicate, but he is willing to show the mark what they've all come here to talk about. That's our ticket. And the draw date, you can see on the top, and you should check the number as well. It's the winning ticket. Alex lets her check the numbers on the National Lottery website. Yes. So it does, doesn't it? I mean, I'm, I'm so terrified you're going to look at it and say, no, you know what, you've got this wrong. <laughs> you've missed a number. You've won a tenner. <laughs> sure enough, those are the winning numbers. Five numbers and the bonus equals a whopping great amount of money. It's £131,000. That's a lot of money. What Ian suggested to me is that I give you some money to go and claim it. I, you know, a couple of hundred pounds and you go and claim it. My problem is they're not going to make the check out to G Framer. Right. They're going to make it out to your name, and we're depending on you giving us that check in return for 500 quid or something. I mean, you know, and I'm a little concerned about that, to be honest. But it's not that I don't trust you. It really isn't. I don't trust you. I just don't know you. I don't, I'm sorry. I, I, I really am. Paul's concerned about letting a complete stranger claim their winnings, and then having to trust her to hand the money over. They'd have no legal comeback if she just decided to keep it. You know, that, that 132 grand will go into your account. Then it's going to be up to you to pay everybody else. So I can kind of understand where Rob's coming from. There's no other way of doing this because you can't claim it because they will initially check if you were in the country or not. You know, it's, it's, the, it's the only way out, really. But if they can't trust the mark to hand over their winnings, they could all end up leaving here empty-handed. Paul has an idea. So here's, here's what I'm suggesting. We've got a syndicate form, which we've all signed. If we make up another one with your name on it, dated for the last week, would you be willing to claim it and be part of the five-part syndicate and we'll let you take a, a fifth of it? <laughs> so they're splitting it four ways, now splitting it five? Absolutely. Would you be happy to do that? Anything. That's silly mistake. It's well done, yeah. So Paul wants to make the mark an official member of the group. They'd all sign a new syndicate agreement that would mean they split all winnings equally between them. There's just one tiny catch. To make me feel better and also to give us a little bit of security, if I give you that ticket, I do want you to pick something up for it. Um, what are you expecting me to put up for? 2,000. The mark must first buy into the syndicate for 2,000 pounds. She'll then be able to claim the winnings from the ticket and keep one fifth for herself. It's 26 and a half thousand each, if you split it five ways. But will the mark stump up the 2,000 pounds? In fact, does she even have access to that much money? That Can you put together 2,000? Do you have that in your bank? Well, I personally don't. That's not what the hustlers want to hear. Why don't you get what you can? Yeah. Let us see what you've got. And, you know, 1,500, I mean... Right. If you want me to go and do this... Yeah, why don't you put your name there just now? Then why don't you put your name there? Before the mark goes off to the bank, the hustlers give her the new syndicate form to sign. But will it all be for nothing? I'll fill it in. You guys go to the bank, get back here as fast as you can. She's still not convinced, but she goes off with her friend to see how much cash she can get together at short notice. Come on up. Did you get to the bank okay? Did it all work out? Okay. Now, how much do you have for me? Well, let me count it out for you, I'll do that. The mark has decided to go for the deal. She hands over the cash. I just can't believe I'm just a lot of money. I know. 
I'll tell you what, I'm going to put it right in the safe. It won't go anywhere. So how much yeah. has she managed to get her hands on? All right, well, that is, uh, that is 1,700 pounds. All right. There's just one thing left to do, and that's to take the ticket to a newsagent. Have it scanned by the lottery till and receive a winner's printout, which you can use to claim a check of the winnings. All right, OK, I'll get this in the safe. Alex and Jess take the mark to a nearby shop with the lottery machine. The mark is carrying the ticket that she thinks is worth £130,000. And a big chunk of that money should be coming her way. Because it's, it's quite a small shop, and I'll come in with you. I'm going to go, why don't you guys wait outside? Alex okay. takes the mark into the newsagents. Unfortunately, there's someone at the till, so they'll have to wait till she's finished. Actually, it's Polly who's making sure to keep her back to the mark at all times so she doesn't get recognised. Alex has to take a phone call, leaving the mark and her ticket. He sends in the mark's friend. She wanted to just have a quick word with you, actually. She's just inside, yeah. The mark's friend turning up is Polly's cue to leave. It means the hustlers can disappear into the night long before that ticket gets anywhere near the lottery machine. The ticket is scanned by the newsagent. It may have the real winning numbers, but it's definitely not a real lottery ticket. In fact, the hustlers printed it themselves using blank lottery paper. The mark's been told her ticket isn't a winner. In fact, it doesn't even have a proper barcode on it. She goes out to find her fellow syndicate members, but they're long gone, along with all her money. So, it's just ran off with all of our money. We che I checked it with, with them and it, on the website and everything. It said all the numbers, it, get, it said the date and everything. We're convinced that we was going to get all this money back. And obviously, like, it's got my like name on the back and everything, well, my last name. I asked the woman to check it over. And she said, it's not a winning ticket. And I asked her to check it again. And she said, it's not. I really didn't think the girls would go for it. I just think I probably wouldn't. But when you're in that situation, you really don't know. Each step, I thought, nah, they're not going to buy it, they're not going to buy it. And each step, they just kept on buying it. Gemma had started thinking of dreams and already spending the money, and it made me feel really bad. This is one of those situations where it all seems a little bit too convenient. A winning lottery ticket belonging to someone with exactly the same name and initials? A lottery ticket is just a piece of paper. So when someone asks you to hand over your hard-earned money for it, you should stop and think. You're probably dealing with scammers trying to find a mark. And if you're not careful, it could be you.